So this video, we're going to look at uh, what we're going to do on the Unity side of the house in order to start tracing these uh, uh, the parts of your terrain out. Uh, so let's go into Inkscape and give you an idea of what we're going to try to do here. So this is this should look familiar. This is the whole one and two of the course I did in the example. And what I'm going to do here to show you is I'm going to disable uh, a couple of these layers. Actually, I think I'm just going to disable them all. And if you may remember that we had challenges with a couple things. One was we couldn't see where this cart path went. It's very obscured back through here. So when we put it in, it got really wavy. Maybe it wasn't in the right spot. It was hard to see these tee boxes here. Uh, we completely missed the tee box over here. And if I zoom in, it is actually hard to see where it's at. So it's up here, but there's a shadow. How far left does it go? And it's even hard to see these ones too. So maybe we'll take a look at those as well. Uh, and also, and I'll show you, because uh, this will be a good example, is let's say at this this dry creek that runs through here and then also down here, and there, it looks like it also kind of comes down through this area. If I wanted to do anything with that in Unity, it'd be very useful to know kind of, or, or I, I, I want to spline this out as like water or something, so I could put dry creek, or at least a different material. So I'd like to know exactly where that kind of indentation is as well. So we'll take a look at that as well. So let's go back into Unity now. And um, we can do a couple different things here. So one is we can turn on our old image. So if we want to get rid of this so we can kind of see a little bit better what's happening. Um, so let's do that. Go to my inner terrain. Uh, go to my image here, and I'm going to replace this guy here with my original one, which is in my terrain backup. Uh, I think I was using Google. Let's see. Yes. So now we've got those Inkscape shapes kind of cleared out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of these, and this is what you didn't see. I just created these like 500 pixel by 500 pixel different colored squares. And I'm going to start adding them as textures. So add texture. Let me do, I'll do the light blue one. Move this out of the way. And we don't need to change the size. We just getting it tiled everywhere is fine. So let's go add. And then let's add another texture. Uh, this green one looks, green might be bad. That's going to be hard to see behind our satellite. So let's do red. Add that one. What happened? Oh, there it goes. And let's add another texture. This one, orange. It's not much different from red, but I give you the idea of when you're working with multiple textures. Add. And now you'll see. Let's go all the way down to this last T box. That was really clear. So we had our T's here, and we can see these flat plateaus. And there's this one up here that we missed. So now we can come and let's say I want to highlight. I'm going to click on the orange. I'm going to come up here to my paint tool and I'm going to make it a really hard brush so we can be really precise with things. And that's a pretty good size. And I'm going to come down here where I see, I can tell that this T box is flat right in here. And I'm just going to click and you're going to see I'm going to start painting this. So there's one T box. Come up here. And I can see that this flat area comes right around here, right around there. Now I went a little far here. So how do I erase? Huh. I go back to my base texture, this one, which is my satellite image. And now I'm essentially just painting that back on, which erases the orange then. Just back up a tad. There we go. I might not want that all the way to the edge. And a little bit so I can put some normal grass around the perimeter. And then let's go to the top here. So this is that top tee box. And if we go down to this angle, yeah, you can see how that plateaus right in through here. So let's go back to orange. And just paint this. So it's not precise. But at least when we go back into, we'll see this spot in Inkscape, we'll have a better idea where this is at.
right? And again, I might have went a little bit too far because I don't want the, it to go in the green, so it's kind of flat on the front. And then another thing you can do, so I'm looking at, you can see here where the cart path ends, and you can see, however, we, we still see the flat surface here. So oh, we can do this one in red too, and I'm gonna make this brush pretty small because I want it precise, so let's do up here. Uh, where's my brush size? There it is. And we can just start doing this. I'm gonna move around and I'm gonna do my best attempt to kind of follow the flat areas here. And this is where maybe this isn't so precise. So you can see, taking into account what the terrain looks like, and also up here, you can see the cart path. It does poke through the, because we're looking at the satellite image, remember, and that's obscured, but we can get an idea of where this is running. Now, this wasn't the worst part. It's coming up. But if I continue to follow this, I think it's going over here. Looks like, yeah, I think it's going up here. Yeah, because I see an embankment up here that gets kind of like it's flat again. Looks like it's going this way a tad. Now the thing is, what you have to make a decision on, is it quicker to do this, or is it quicker just to draw your car path and carve it, right? Let the chips fall where they may. Ah, and I see there is, eh, this is probably a bridge right here. So because we did this, I was able to find this is most, because this is a, you're going to see this is our dry creek bread bed. And I think I do remember like a small bridge there. So I might have to go back into Blender and add a bridge there. If I really want this accurate, at the end of the day, no one's probably going to know why they're playing the course that there was a bridge there. Um, but I'm kind of meticulous like that. There's a bridge there. I want a bridge there, right? So now you can see, I think I got that cart path. Yeah, and I can see it's here. And it's going to go right there. And this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to pause here. And I'm going to do these other tee boxes and a couple other things. But you get the idea. So one last note. I think it was pretty clear, but you can use these different colors. So here, where my cart path is, I don't want to get these two overlapped. I want to make sure that I can see. Um, so that's why I'm using a different color here. I'm going to use blue so that when I trace this one out, um, it, if it overlaps the cart path, it's at least easy to see in Inkscape. So as I was going through this, I thought this would be a good example how this reverse splining can, can help you out. Um, so I really wasn't sure about the cart path. It was obscured. So this is the uh, the stream that kind of, that's not a stream, it's like a dry creek bed. It's more like when it rains hard, the water kind of drains through here. But there, it's definitely a different, like lots of rocks and weeds. So you can see I was tracing this. It's very clear that it's, that it's here because I see this little ditch. So I've been tracing this and tapping it and following it along. And then up here, you know, I, I knew there was a bridge in here. At least I thought there was a bridge. But I could see... It looks like it runs this way, but then it goes nowhere. But up here, you can see there's like a, an indentation here, which is obviously the, how the stream comes off this mountain, this runoff. So if I trace this up through here, I can see that it runs all the way up to the road, and then all you can I can even see it go up the mountain. But it now at least gives me an idea of where that bridge is. So most likely it's like that bridge is right here. Um, so you can just see how like using that train and this function can help you get more of an accurate representation of your course. Um, something else that I did, this is going to be a hybrid course. It's going to be somewhat fantasy, somewhat real. The thing about this course, it's really short, right? Um, I think it's under, it might be around 5,000 yards total because the back nine is really short. I'm going to lengthen this course. So here are the T boxes that we saw earlier and that I did, and they were they're the real T boxes. But I'm getting creative here, and I just made some additional tee boxes. So I'll have two sets of tee boxes back here as well. So I lifted those up, 
and I'm going to put a stone wall around here. So I made this, there's a lot of stone uh, work around here. So I just lifted this up and flattened this out and, and put this steep cliff in here. And then I'm going to put stones up against here. Um, but you can see how now I just marked this tee box and I even went as far as to, um, oops, sorry, I'm probably making you dizzy, is, is as far to make it two tiered. Uh, it's hard to see, but this is a little bit lower than the backs, a little bit higher. So there'll be a, like a blues and blacks back here as well. And I'm going to do that for a lot of the holes is to make this kind of a hybrid course.